Hey, back for another video talking about albums that shape my life. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about two records from Cannibal Corpse, the live album Live Cannibalism and the album Bloodthirst. I can't remember which record I got first. I do seem to remember buying a copy of Terrorizer magazine. Um, it featured a lot of like extreme music uh, or just like darker metal stuff, so like extreme stuff, doom, blackmail, whatever. Um, and I remember Hammer Smash Face live being I think the last track on this CD and I, I had heard maybe Pounded Into Dust on like a Metal Hammer CD beforehand but I never really like just listened to it I think I just skipped it uh, but when I heard him announce the song in that death metal voice and I was already getting into heavier stuff and I think Slipknot had probably like name dropped Cannibal Corpse in interviews and stuff so I was ready to to check some some of that stuff out and uh I can't remember if I bought the live album first. It's the sort of thing that I used to do back in the day. Like I did it with Pantera. Like I'd go out and buy the live album of a band that I think I was going to get into and then figure out which songs I liked the best. And then I'd go and buy whichever record had the most songs that I liked the most. So this is around the Bloodthirst era. Um, I think that record came out in 99 and the live album came out in 2000. And a huge thing that stands out when I listen back to these records is the production on both of them sounds really good still. They're both mixed by Colin Richardson and that snare sound, especially on the live album, the like the way it pops in the mix is something that I'm obsessed with and I can never find snares that sound like that. So I'm always trying to make my own samples that have that same sort of aesthetic to them. Um, so yeah, the, the mix on both those records is amazing. It still holds up today, even though it's really old. By, by now it's like 25 years old, Bloodthirst, and it sounds amazing. Um, they had started using seven strings, which admittedly I'm not like super keen on super down tuned stuff, but I just love Cannibal Corpse. Um, and this was like my first introduction to really good, really tight sounding uh, death metal. And there weren't many records out at the time that sounded as good as that and were played as tightly and there was an element of it being kind of i don't want to say a novelty but being like a young kid and hearing some of the pretty questionable song titles and that kind of thing um and just me and my friends just like trying to emulate corpse grinder and the way he introduced songs like walking home from school every day uh or at least the original guys in silosis when we were kids when we first started so uh yeah both those records Again, like I, I think I've got the live album first and then I think Unleashing the Bloodthirsty really stood out to me. And I think that's probably my favourite Cannibal Corpse song. I think it's my favourite track on Bloodthirst. Uh, other notable mentions for that record would be Dead Human Collection and is it Ecstasy and Decay? I should probably get, have the record up in front of me for these things, shouldn't I? I think there's an element of it being somewhat rebellious in terms of just like how over the top the music was or like the lyrical content um but my parents were always pretty cool with um buying me that stuff i, I think i asked for bloodthirst for christmas in christmas 2000 and uh i think i remember my dad telling me like i think he'd gone out to like buy some cds that i put on a christmas list for him and he went into a record store in reading that has been gone for many many years called rusty's and it was mostly like a metal independent metal shop. So it was mostly metal records. They had a small rack of black t-shirts for all the metal merch. And he came back and he was like, they've got this live cannibalism box set in there. And I was like, what is that? He was like, it's a, the live album. It's a VHS tape of the concert and a patch and a guitar pick in a really cool box. And I was just like, obsessed like cannibal corpse were a band that i got really into i just got into like collecting all their stuff and buying t-shirts and like the box sets that they put out uh it was always really well thought out stuff between them and i guess metal blade records as well coming up with cool ideas and ways to release things and doing things a bit differently um so yeah the, the live cannibalism box set is something that i still cherish to this day that i have in my living room up on a shelf <laughs> and um yeah, just, just both those records. I think I love the whole Cannibal Corpse discography. They're kind of like Slayer and that you kind of know what you're going to get. They kind of stick to what they do, but to me they are the most consistent or one of the most consistent bands because although they kind of do the same thing, they still do enough things differently to 
throw in some surprises and it, even if it's still the same the level of quality over the years has never dropped so like okay if it's not stylistically that different okay but is the music amazing yeah so like they're one of those bands that to me you know what you're going to get and the quality is never going to falter and that's that's been the same for their whole career so they've been a band that has been one of my favorite bands for the longest time and i actually got to share a stage with them that i didn't even realize was going to happen and we were on tour with it was lamb of god in flames hate breed Silosis in the u.s in 2012 and halfway through the tour hate breed drop off and hell yeah we're on and we played uh columbus ohio and then he just wouldn't play that show and this, this wasn't like a thing that just came up on tour it was just like hell yeah weren't going to play that show so it was Obviously, for them, weeks in advance, like this wasn't just a last-minute decision from Vinny. But it meant that um, there was space on the package, and for some reason, it lined up with Cannibal Corpse, and Cannibal Corpse were on right after us. So got to share a stage with them. They played right after us. I remember giving Rob Barrett a copy of Monolith at the time, and uh, just talking to him for a bit. He was super cool. They are all really friendly. And I think I remember talking to him about his old kind of more thrash death metal band called Solstice. Um, and he was the singer in that band. And that band is awesome. The record they put out was cool. Um, and funnily enough, like Cannibal Corpse, uh, particularly all the leads on Bloodthirst, there's definitely some like melodic stuff, but there's also some more like erratic kind of Slayer style guitar solos in there. And that record, I think that was around the time I was like getting into Pantera and stuff. But Slipknot didn't have any solos, and I was like coming out of the new metal era where no one was really doing solos. So extreme metal was kind of my intro into like fast, shreddy stuff. And the players that made me want to play really fast technical solos at the time, or the first ones, were Pat and Jack from Cannibal Corpse and Trey from Morbid Angel as well. Like that was the first time that I really got into music that had really technical shredding in it. And they were like those three guitarists in particular were the ones that made me want to like actually practice and like get good at guitar even though a lot of that stuff was kind of a bit atonal in Cannibal Corpse especially the technique was still there I could still hear that the playing was cool and there was something about the sound of the fast playing that just sounded really intense and aggressive even if you know it wasn't like melodic or anything so that was kind of my introduction to shred guitar um, or just like more technical playing and I think the intensity and sounds that I heard on that is what I liked about shredding as opposed to like showing off or playing like sweet picking stuff. I really just liked how aggressive some of the really fast picking uh, leads kind of sounded. And like we were getting into Slayer at the time as well, like me and the original guys in Silo. So it's like we were just kind of ingesting all the music we could at the time that was heavy and trying to do our like metal homework and check out all the classics like rain and blood and that kind of thing um so even like slayer that was another band where they had like technical solos that some guitarists might kind of scoff at now in terms of the um technicality or like a lot of guitarists like downplay the the atonal nature of slayer solos but um it's all about the intensity and like some of those Slayer solos are still really memorable, even if it's just like how they do the dive bombs and just like the erratic noises they make. It all kind of adds the kind of evil, frantic kind of sound of the band. So um, same goes for Cannibal Corpse. And like I said, huge influence on me in terms of the way I write riffs um, and my first introduction to like more technical playing. So like Bloodthirst, that record, definitely probably my top 10 records of all time and probably my favorite death metal record of all time as well. <laughs> 